I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today. We're here with Greg Koch. Nicely done. Perfect. So, well, my Baker, it's a German last name, you know. <laughs> R- rhymes with chalk. Yes, just exactly to, correct. Just to, just to clarify that. That's hey, man, right. I, you know, I, there's so many reasons that I want to talk to you. Um, one of them is you are probably the most enterprising guitar player in the world. Well, I don't know. I just, you know I what? Know. I'm not a success at all costs type of guy. I'm a success to divert the costs. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it in a nutshell. I understand that really well. I mean, it's amazing how, how well I got, get, got it. Got it. But, but man, I mean, well, first of all, obviously you're a hell of a player. You went to school. I did. You know, you, you, uh, you know, a lot of guys that, you know, play, you know, rockabilly and blues and all this stuff, you know, they just kind of learned it through organic, os- you know, osmosis, if you will, from, from the, that out there. Um, and you did that as well. You started with the Hendrix thing and, but you also went to school and got all that theory in your head. Yes. Forgot all that shit and play as somebody once said, you know, yes. And, uh, yes. But you know, you know, what's going on. I mean, but you do everything. I mean, you know, on your website, you say what well, you're the you're the, you know, the the, the best known un- guitar, unknown guitar player. Something yeah, exactly. Like that. Something yeah. like that. Something like that. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know about all that, but yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. I mean, you you do live gigs. You got a band. You got a trio. Yep. Um, yep. Now, is that your son or brother? Or That's my son on drums. Yes. Your son, your son is playing drums. Okay. So you got um, you got live bands. You've got uh lessons out the yin yang you do podcasting you do true fire lessons as well correct uh, yep. you got youtube shit i mean every style every style that has to do with somewhat rock based guitar you know what i'm saying i mean you're not you're not teaching uh old school um old school jazz even though i'm sure you could but you know i mean you, you know all of the blue stuff all of the you know all that you know every style under the sun and you, you're doing all that I mean, you're just like you're you're doing. The, are you still doing the Wildwood thing? I mean, I've seen. Yes, that. yes. I've and seen. and I've, actually, they send me the guitars now. I haven't been out there since uh, February of 2020. So wow. they send me guitars and I do them all here now. And then well, I send you, them back. So you do the Wildwood thing. You do the thing with Fishman. Right. And uh, I've seen you, you know, in, in the booth doing that whole that whole thing. So you're a spokesperson you're a demonstrator you're an act you know you're an artist you're an author you're a teacher uh, i mean I, I don't know how many more things you can do are you are you a talk show host i guess maybe you are that i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell you what my wife could tell you several things that i fall short upon so <laughs> that's her job <laughs> that's exactly correct <laughs> that's so I'm, I'm also the father of four children my youngest just went off to college Oh, wow. Uh, so I last week we moved my youngest daughter from one apartment to the next. She's finishing up college this semester. And my youngest began college. So we had to move him in and then uh, came home. And now we're 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 going to build a storage room over my garage because uh, yeah. that's what I have to say it is. Uh, but that's gonna <laughs> where, where you see me right now is the orange room it's it's in the back of the house and the dining yeah. room's here and over there is the uh the living room and my wife desperately wants to get this gear out of the house you see and perhaps for some of that ancillary noise to also be in a detached facility that is primarily used for storage bob but, I, I, uh, I get it man i get it I, but so i have I'm been trying to I've, I've been trying to get everything out of the garage uh, before Monday when the project begins. And there is so much crap in that garage. It's, it's unbelievable. So I, 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 I hear you. I feel it. So let's talk about you and music and what's going on with you. You know, as the, as the magazine is jazz guitar today. So what are you doing today, man? What's going on with you? What, what's, what's, what's the hot spot with you right now? Well, you know, we are finally gigging quite a bit with the band and I, and I say that because, you know, I've always had a, uh, I've always had an agent in Europe that would book us, you know, I'd get over there once to twice a year and we do sometimes a couple of weeks, sometimes a month, sometimes in the past 20 years or so I've, 
you know, been uh, fortunate enough to be able to uh, double, you know, triple, <laughs> triple dip, as I like to say, oh. work, work clinics in with the gigs and so on and so forth. And that is, that has turned out to be a good thing overseas, but in the States, it's, it's always been kind of a, a, a uphill battle to book the band in the States. Now I've, you know, over the years, I've been able to have little, you know, anchor gigs here and there, put some stuff around it, you know, especially when I was doing the Fender thing, a lot of times that would be full band clinics and we would, we would put stuff around it. Uh, but just right before COVID, we finally got a booking agent. And primarily <laughs> that happened because I was doing a live stream and people are tuning in going, how come you're not playing in Poughkeepsie? You know, how come you're not in Baltimore? Well, Phoenix. And I'm like, it's not like I'm thinking to myself, how can I avoid these communities? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> It's like I've made a list out of places I'm not coming ever. I'm never you know? gonna. I'm never gonna play Poughkeepsie. <laughs> I said if I had a gig there, if I had an agent, I'd be yeah. glad to come. Yeah. So, so this guy who is a booking agent, but also a guitar player, was watching and said, "Well, I'll book you." He mostly books country guys and so on and so forth, or country acts. Uh, but he, his his group started to uh, book us right before. COVID hit. And so it was really great. We're like, oh, we can finally like start touring. And then COVID hit. Right. But I was very, very fortunate in being able to do a bunch of live streams from the house. So I was, I, I was in a pretty good position throughout COVID, thank God, that I was able to kind of keep doing my thing. But keep now going. we're yeah. starting to get out there and, and do quite a bit of stuff. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just fun to just go out after, you know, I mean, I've been at yeah. this a long time and to be able to um, to finally get to these various different areas and just play. And it's so gratifying to have people come out and say, you know, online is one thing, but when you see it or when you experience it live, it's right. like completely different. I'm like, well, this is what it's always been about. Right. Yeah. The other, the other stuff was just the, the other stuff what was... I had to do, right. you know, <laughs> it's always been about what you're seeing yeah. right here. It's always yeah. been about, you know, and that's was my aim all along was to kind of hybridize all the different influences I had, try to put my own stamp on it and write original music and, and, and approach it in such a way that would hopefully be entertaining and, you know, really make, be impactful. You know, when people see it, I want them to leave going, holy shit, what was that? You know? Right. No, and, I love it. And so, so that's ask, what we're doing. Let me ask you a question about that because you, you know, you got to, you, you are well known for having uh, a personality larger than life. You know, I mean, the whole, your the whole Greg Cock persona is <laughs> well done. <huge. laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> it's huge. I mean, you know, you got, you're big, you know, I mean, physically you're big, but you got a huge personality. And do you find that when you go gig and you're playing your music and all that stuff, do you find that um, to, to reach into that deep part of your soul, you have to, you change a little bit more are, are your live performances is your per how does that work for you to go from being larger than life to being okay now i'm going to really think about this other thing i mean does that change or is it the same or how does that I, affect you it's it's the same pretty much i mean it's uh lately what we've been doing i mean people always say that they they can they get the humor in in the even when i'm just playing you know, the personality comes through, which is gratifying to know that that's, you know, that, you know, the right. biggest goal you can have is to try to play how you are, you know, authentically, exactly, authentically. So right. I, I find that um, the show is pretty well balanced in we just go out there and we, we hit them with like three tunes back to back. And then, uh, but the banter between the songs, I mean, it's, it's, it's always, uh, uh extemporaneous mm -hmm. and, and uh and it's i'd like to think it's humorous people seem to think it's humorous <laughs> uh and we, and we definitely have some tunes that are uh humor oriented in a way but for the most part i think it's i think it's a pretty good i mean people know that when when it's time to just play there we ain't messing around yeah there's, there's, <laughs> some, there's some there's some serious shit going on you know? exactly yeah, exactly it's uh yeah, I, I mean, I think I heard you, you, you sort of said that without saying it, you know, this is what it's always been about. This is what I've had to do to put food on the table and to remain, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Right, right, right. And, um, but it's always been about, you know, Greg, the artist, if you will. I mean, I right. was, you know, a guitar player. 
I don't think anybody wakes up any morning of their of their life when they're young and they're grabbing their first guitar. Man, I want to be the world's best guitar demonstrator. Or right, you know, right. You, you know, you just that's not the guy. I want to be a rock star or whatever it is. You know, right, uh, right. And so, so that that's very very cool. Now, one of the things that we'll we will get from you is uh, you know some kind of a graphic or some artwork about where you're going to be because I know you're going to be down in Florida. You're going to, you're going all over the damn place. Yeah, starting next week. Yep. Y yeah. So that's got to be really really exciting. What kind of a rig will you take when you go? Well, lately, what I've been doing is I've been bringing my signature caulk amplifier, which is always amusing to some folks. I mean, the, the company it's, themselves have been around for years, and they're from right. the Netherlands. But I have a signature amp with a company with my same last name. I know, and that's that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no but, Baker amplifiers out there. I don't know. Right, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> so I use that amp, uh, and and prior to. Um, like all during pre-COVID times, right. I would just use that amp and that would be it because it's got everything on it. I mean, it's right. the, the clean sound. It's great. I've got a way to grunge up the clean sound just a little bit if I want to all on board. It's got a harmonic vibrato on board, which sounds like a univibe. So all of my kind of pseudo modulation needs are taken care of. The reverb is glorious. Uh, the lead sound is great. There's a lead boost and there's also ability to add this other boost thing on there. So it sounds like a fuzz. So literally I'd leave the house with a chord, the guitar, and I'm done, right? Wow. Uh, but then during COVID, I started to have fun using, you know, a little bit of delay here and there, a couple other little doohickeys. And so I started to use a pedal board again. Um, and I've got this signature overdrive pedal I've had for years. My, a buddy of mine I went to college with made this unbelievable overdrive and clean boost for it. And I've been using it for years. And so I started using that. And there's just a different feeling when you use overdrive on, an, on a pedal. You just get a visceral push that just seems for a live experience just gives you a little bit more gumption and uh, it doesn't necessarily sound superior. It just, it just does a different thing for me. Right. So I started using my pedal board with that amp, but then I started bringing two. So I would use the clean sound on the amps and then just, cause I, cause you know, I'll tell you what, being in an organ trio, I mean, my son's a heavy hitter, but you know, he know he plays dynamically, but when it's time to rock, I mean, that snare is cracking. And in Toby, you know, he's playing keyboard bass, you know, with his left hand on the, the B3 a little yeah, bit sure. with, the, with, with, the, with the pedals. Right. And, and then, you know, he's got the Leslie Roar and the Leslie's everywhere and you're on stage. I mean, there's no escape. And it is louder than the word of God. When, Does he when, use when, one or two? He uses one, but he uses a bass amp for the low end. Oh, well, wow, there you go. So it's, 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 it's a lot to overcome. Shall yeah, no, that, that, listen, I, I know I, I played with a guy years ago that had a, C, a C3 and two full size Leslie's, and he used to make me help and carry the goddamn things into, into the clubs. It was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah it's it's but glorious. It, it's everywhere. It's a, yeah, it, no, it's but great. It's everywhere. So, so do you, I, let I, me just say a quick question. Are you guys traveling in your own truck, or I mean, you must be? Your own we've bus? got uh, Toby's got a Tahoe and a trailer. So okay, right. we've been putting everything in there. But lately, when I, when I did this recording session down at uh, Sweetwater down in Fort Wayne a few months back, Mm -hmm. I brought my amp in and I was just going to use my amp and Sean, the uh, engineer down there is like, maybe we could use something with some 12s as well. Cause my amp has two tens in it. And I'm like, I'm down with that. So I ended up using a Friedman dirty Shirley and a 412 Marshall hand wired mm -hmm. thing, but I set it clean, you know, and it just was in tandem with the, uh, the caulk amp and it sounded freaking glorious. So oh, yeah. Yeah, and then I thought, well, it'd be nice to maybe have that kind of a thing along with my caulk amp. So I ended up getting a Marshall uh, SV20, which is a 20 watt plexi basically. And it's right. got this two, actually this little red one back here is, is one of those as well. I've got one that looks like a regular, you know, style Marshall old right, school yeah. plexi. Uh, but then why, once I loved that one, Wildwood had, had a limited run of red Tolex one. So I had to get it, but it's, it's two twelves, but it's only a 20 watt amp. But it's a loud 20 watts. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I run it in tandem with my caulk amp. I put the caulk amp up. And then that's pretty tall. It's, it's two 12s on top of each other. But it's right. like a, a half stack sliced in half. And um, and I run them both clean. And then when I hit the clean boost on the on my Gristle King, it just makes them, you know, squish a little bit. And then when I hit the overdrive sound, it's the it sounds like the end of the world. And I split them with a... Um, uh, a Neo Instruments ventilator, which has been my go-to Leslie simulator for years, 
And, and I haven't been using it for a while because I've had, as I said, I've got the harmonic vibrato on the amp and I'm playing with an organ player. So the need for a Leslie didn't seem yeah. to, to uh, make sense. But now when you have like double Leslie's and mine's in stereo, man, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty awesome. Is I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a word that you didn't come up with, but I'm gonna give it to you. Swirlicious. Yes. <laughs> Swirl again. So Swirl again. I'll go with that. That's, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you know, but you know, there there is something to be said for having a lot of freaking amps and and air moving on stage. I mean, it just it just it hits you viscerally, you know. Well, and the thing is, it's not it's not necessarily a volume thing. It's, no, it's, it's not a volume a, thing at all. It's just it's a big thing. Yeah, no, it, it it it's it's a visceral. It get it gets into your, your you know you, you hit a note and then when it's singing to you and vibrating your body at the same time, it's a pretty cool thing. And and, and that's what you're saying. And I think that, you know, people that are in the audience with a full rig, if you will, versus people are in the audience with less. Let's be kind and say less than a full rig. We all know what we're talking about. Right. And there's just, you know it's 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 the same stuff. But it's a kiss in your sister thing, you know. Yes. It's not gonna, you know, it's not. You, you, you know where I'm going with this. Oh yeah, I'm absolutely. Gonna, I, I, you know, I gotta keep this uh, PG or whatever you want to call it. Right. But yeah, but no, <laughs> but that that that's really, really, that's really, really cool. So, uh, all right. So, what uh, what guitar are you taking? What are you doing? What are you playing? Well, I've got my signature Reverends, which which I love. So, yeah. it, I mean, that was one of those things where, you know, I developed those pickups with Fishman, and yeah. and they just it just that was a whole happenstance weird thing how it all turned out but it you know I'm, and i was never really one to be like taking pickups out of guitars and putting right, up different yeah. ones in it's like if i had a guitar that worked you know we're done uh but it really solved a lot of problems for me because i wanted you know a lot of times it was always like yeah noiseless pickups you have that one guitar that's noiseless but doesn't necessarily sound the best right right, right. and you have your it's but this was a game changer because they sounded unbelievable and they were noiseless and they had a separate boost and they looked traditional. You no, know? they're very, they're very, very cool pickups. So, cool. so, so I dug them and I had them on a telly and I loved all that. And I initially, I, you know, I approached Fender cause I still have a bunch of, bunch of buddies there. And I said, man, wouldn't it make sense for us to work together on something? I mean, you, you work with Fishman all the time anyway. I mean, all the electronics and the acoustasonic that's right. Fishman, you know? Right. And, uh, it was weird for whatever reason they wanted they wanted nothing to do with it they and i was like okay fine but i had been buddies with the reverend guys for years just you know buddies from wildwood right. trade shows hanging out and they just said one time like look no pressure because we're buddies and we always will be but if you ever wanted to suss out a guitar you know we'd be into you know looking at it so you know i had this idea of just having a slightly larger bodied telly Right. And I approached that with Fender years ago. I'm like, look, you know, a lot of people see me playing the guitar. They're like, what is that? A ukulele? Is that three quarter size? You know, well, are you, you six, four or five? I'm six, six or six, seven, actually. <laughs> so I'm a big fella. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You need, you, yeah. Tell you tell you one of the, see this guitar looks, you know, I'm five ten. you know, I mean, it, it fits me. Okay. You know? Right. But this guitar it looks like a little toothpick in your hands yes you know yes. it's just too too small and and it's got to feel that way it can't give you you know it's got to right. be like like a ukulele yeah it's got to feel exactly. that way so six, me, I, I didn't realize you were six seven i knew you were six five or six four six five but I didn't yeah know. six seven my son's the same height so we're wow we're uh we so walk nobody, into a nobody place. nobody charges the stage when you guys are there right is that what's happening? uh that's correct <laughs> we serve as our own security <laughs> <laughs> so you got the, so the reverend is a, is a telly with a slightly larger body is it 10 percent bigger i mean is there any it's like it's on? like it's between two and three percent somewhere oh, just in there. a little bit okay yeah so I, I i travel with um with the the telly style one and then we recently came out with uh this one which is a set neck version with oh, my p that. with my p90s that i did with them man your p90s sound yeah i was listening to your youtube stuff you know i've gone i listened to you play and those P90s are, to use your terminology, they're glorious. I do love them. Man, they, they're freaking awesome. And this guitar has been awesome. So what I typically do is I start the night off with the P90s. Right. And I do a few tunes, you know, with that kind of thicker tone. 
Uh, then I bring another one along, another one of the P90, as we call them, the Gristle 90. The gristle I bring another 90. one that I have in open G tuning, and I do a couple slide tunes. And then I grab, I grab the tel- more telly ish one for when I'm going for the jugular, and then uh, finish cool. finish the night with that weapon. I want to come back to your playing in a minute, but let's 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 segue into your teaching for a second. Just I'm yes. going to ask you a couple questions about that. So of all the styles that you play and that you teach, which is the one that everybody says, I want to know that. I want to know oh, that. It's the chicken picking. I get asked about the chicken picking. And no matter how many times I've, I've discussed it online, both in, you know, DVDs and, you know, True Fire and books and so on and so forth. It's like every time, like I just did, you know, Andy Woods camp. And, you know, the week before that, I was at the Paul Gilbert thing. And every time it's That's like, what they want I, how do you do the chicken picking? And I break it. There's a few different ways that I break it down, you know, with the thumb and finger picking fingers. And then I do this little kind of alternate picking, but with like pinch harmonics, every other one. And that, that kind of does the same thing. And then I give them a few different exercises. Then I have a bunch of different ways of breaking down some hybrid picking stuff for, for them to use and abuse. And, but yeah, literally every time they want to know that. And then I get quite a few questions now about the standard tuning slide stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they ask about the chords. What do you, oh, you're comping. What are you doing when you're comping and you're playing you know, all this stuff? And, and then I break down a few different things that I, that I utilize for that. And, and, uh, and then they get around and then they want to know about the outside stuff. What are you, how are you playing outside side? You know, and it, because the vibrato, I mean, they ask about vibrato and they ask about phrasing, but there's only so much you can describe that as, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I can show yeah, them uh, physically, but that's a thing that you've just trial and error. You just yeah, gotta, yeah. The, you can't get you got yeah right. I I get it. The so, chicken picking thing that's interesting. I mean, um, it's, it's a bizarre thing because, um, I got into that style primarily because I heard you know Mark Knopfler play, and, and actually it was a Jeff Beck record. I remember hearing the There and Back record and the mm-hmm. second tune after Star Cycle. I can't remember what that tune's called. Uh, that bear, deer, 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 deer. Yeah. anyway he, he goes into this little solo and he's like hitting one note and he's chicken picking it sounds yeah. like to me and i heard that around the same time as i heard some mark knopfler stuff yeah and and i was never a fan of country music right I, it's i just i mean hee-haw used to be on when i was a kid and i was like i i don't get it you know but I, there's I, something I, there's something to that snapping thing you know that exactly exactly and so it yeah. was it was because of um, Albert Lee. Oh, when I heard yeah. Albert Lee play on Clapton's uh, "Just One Night" record, that got me into it. And then another English guy, uh, Ray Flack, who played with Ricky Skaggs, and right. I heard I heard those records. And then you know some Steve Morris with the Dixie Dregs, he would do some stuff. And then I started to then I got into James Burton, and when it got in more into Chet Atkins and jerry reed and and uh, jimmy bryant and started to do the deep yeah you're you're going back to the yeah did the the deep dive you know uh and then then i got into danny gatton and and roy buchanan pretty early on and that was a whole but you know the funny thing about it is is that uh i kind of got turned off to the style only because it's it's become part of the, the the shred lexicon and, yeah I, I, and, I get it man I, I you know what i mean that. and yeah, I and yeah. as much as i love the visceral popping of the strings and adding that stuff in there because i like i because i like it's funky as shit i like the funky aspect right yeah but but when it becomes like just an endless torrent of like pyrotechnics yeah, I, I I don't, you know, it kind of yeah. loses it for me. You know yeah, what I mean? Then, uh, yeah, I, not, I don't know what you mean. You're, you're preaching to a preacher. You're not preaching to the choir. You're preaching to a preacher. That's where I go. You know, it's like, okay, I call it the dancing bear thing. You know, it's, oh, wow, look at that. But then after you've seen the bear dance a little bit, it's, all right, well, what else does the bear do? You know, I'm right. not, I've lost my, you know, and there, there's a few genres that have that dancing bear kind of, that's what I call it, eh? that dancing bear kind of thing. But you know, it's like, uh, you know, you still want to listen to, you know, B.B. King, Jeff Beck, Eric, what, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, Jeff's, Jeff's a pyrotechnic guy in his own way, if you will. Right. But there's something incredibly lyric and, and, and um, you know, melodic about what he goes about doing. And, right, absolutely. And mm-hmm. he keeps changing it up. I mean, he'll do shit and he'll do a whole bunch of other kind of stuff. Whereas a lot of guys that are doing, you know, the let's call it the shredding thing. You know, it seems like it's the same thing 
over and over and over again. Whereas Jeff seems to have an in in um, inexhaustible amount of creativity when it comes right. to pulling shit out of a guitar. I mean, it's like okay, all right, I see what's going on there. Oh, we're not right. gonna do that anymore. Well, do that again. No, I'm not doing that again. I'm gonna do this now. You know, it's crazy. Exactly. You know, it's yes. like I, I agree. I mean, I hundred percent. I I, uh, I I I bow to the altar of Mr. Beck myself. You know, it's, uh, I, absolutely. He, he's he's my guy, if you will, for for that stuff. I just love it. Um, so in your own plane, what what are you doing now? I mean, what 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 are your personal um, uh, goals, challenges, and stuff like that? And for your own playing, I mean, is there a, is there something you're going? You know, I really want to dive deeper into whatever the hell it is, Ravel, or not not that it would be a style, but what, what are you what are you saying? Hmm, man, I'm digging that. I think I want to expand my thought. You know, some synapses, if you will, into that thing. What 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 are your horizons? What are you, what are you trying to do to expand your own playing now? Well, what's interesting is that I've I've gotten to a point where I've um, and 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 part of this was due to the the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. um, is that I, I look back and I was like, I've got all this music from the past that I you know you're you're in the moment you put it out you know right. you you do what you can you move on to the next thing, and you're constantly adding new stuff to the the arsenal of you know. Um, you know, not only from a, a, a lick or physical point of view, but, you know, different, you know, harmonic things make sense to you over time that didn't when you were younger and, and, and all that other kind of stuff. And that, that always keeps, in, you know, expanding and increasing, but I, I find myself in kind of more of a refinement mode instead okay. of like learning new things. Um, okay. Although I've, I'm always, you know, investigating new things and coming up with little little things and they come from the weirdest places you know like uh i was watching tosin abasi at that that thing and he was playing you know uh, animals as leaders music which is not necessarily my cup of tea right right I but you. he was he was doing this thing and i was like well that's similar to what i do but it's he's adding one more note in there so it was kind of hammer on and then hitting again and then doing this kind of and um, I know that sounds like a technical term, blah, 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 blah. but I started using but, that. But, I, we all, but we all know what you're thinking. Right. right. <laughs> that's very, that's a very communicative, uh, you know, thing. So go ahead. So I, all of a sudden I found myself coming up with, you know, different tunes and that, and that's kind of what I do with my, my playing now is that I'll, I'll hear something that comes from a, a completely different angle and go, well, what's that? And then I'll, I'll kind of take that and add it to, my arsenal but when I, what i've been trying to do is i listen to various different things you know people are always we're on the road they post videos of you playing and you listen back and sometimes you're like oh it wasn't as bad as i thought <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know and, and it was kind of interesting because guthrie trap was just discussed this you know he, he mentioned that when we were walking he's like i don't know about you but I've, i'm in this thing now where I'm, it's like i'll play and in the moment i'm like man I, this sucks i just completely screwed up that section and then you listen back and you're like, well, that was nothing because it happens so fast yeah. in, in reality. But at yeah. the moment, because we're, you know, we think as we yeah. think it's like this blemish that's just everyone can see in here. Right. Anywho. So I, I find myself expurgating my playing and thinking, well, what do I like about this? And what do I not like about that? And typically what I've just come to realize is, is that the whole reason why I got into music was because of, of of Hendrix and Creamier Clapton and and Beck and Page and Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts and then of course BB King and Albert King, but all those guys have in common was this, you know, the vibrato and the phrasing and the tone, right? And all the technical stuff on top of that was just icing on the cake. Right. And I think what happens with me and probably everybody else is that. It's, you start adding more and more technical stuff as your technique allows it. Mm -hmm. And then you have a tendency to veer away from those more primal elements. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so I've really, and, and I've always tried to be cognizant of that, but I'm even more so as of late, because I find that just the stuff I personally like listening to mm -hmm. is that, you know what I mean? It, it's like one of the reasons why I like, you know, from a jazz point of view, it's like, uh, I love listening to West Montgomery, uh, and I used to I used to love listening to to to, um, to George Benson. Mm -hmm. But even though you know what Grant Green's going to do and so on and so forth, 
I listen to Grant Green more than oh, you, either of those two guys. You know I, what I mean? I, I, no, I totally understand it. I get it. Yeah, and and so that's that's kind of where I'm at at this particular juncture is is just trying to intelligently refine but keep it primal and yeah. um, you know and I've made I've made some significant you know uh, leaps in my understanding of some theory things that I always just kind of like yeah I kind of don't get that but I don't really need that stuff all that often so I guess I'm not going to worry about it. And then as years go by, you're like, oh, I, I get all, I see that. That's just this, but that, you know, so I, I've been trying to refine um, and, and, and not with, you know, cause you know, when you deal with like altered chords and so on and so forth, it's like, they don't come around that often. So you've got like this smaller grab bag of stuff that you do like every time over right. those, over those chords. Right. And I don't, and I don't want to do that. I want to have it be more, um, have it be sophisticated in the fact that I know what those changes are, but also have it be random every time. I've also come, you know, I, I have songs that I, I've been writing and I used to always make more songs more complex because I thought that was my job. My job is to kick the can a little bit farther down the road. So when I come up with a, a blues tune per se, I'm going to make sure that it's got some weird changes in it, maybe a, a weirder bass line you've never heard before, uh, a bridge that's going to do this, maybe a cool little ostinato thing that happens at some point. Um, and that was all well and good. But now I find myself writing tunes that are simpler, uh, but they give you the opportunity of you can play over the changes or you cannot. And it's, you know what I mean? I like guitar players, and I think this is kind of what you're talking about. I like guitar players that you don't, you're not really listening to the guitar. You're listening to music. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, it's like, you, like, like Pat Metheny is a really good example. I mean, he's as sophisticated as anybody wants to be, but his music is very accessible to the lay ear. Yes. You know, and to the, and but it's very rewarding to the more sophisticated ear. And, and if he's going to hit a D chord, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna hit a D chord. I mean, that's what he's, you know, he's gonna first position old, you know, D. I mean, I've seen him, you know, play and, and, and Joe Pass used to do that too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, he used to, he used to, he would hit, you know, Joe DiOrio once made a comment. He said, um, he said, he said, Joe, you're, you're playing a, a D, I think it was, it was a D chord in this case. He said, he said, it's there. It's easy. It's the right chord. Sounds good. I'm going to play that chord. That's what I'm playing. So right. there are so many guitar players play with their eyes and right. they evaluate with their eyes, you know, like, wow, look at that thing that he's doing and look at all this stuff that's going on. But, but if you take the record home sometimes and you listen to what that was, you realize that that's a lot of performance art, nothing wrong with performance art, but it wasn't really music. If you know right. What I'm yeah, I, think yeah, yeah. I think that's what you're talking about. I think that's, yes. You know, and um, what what is the the Scott Henderson you know quote? I'd better listen to BB King drop his guitar than X Y Z shred. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and so, so so I I I definitely understand what you're saying. You know, you're you're so, and thank you for that. I, I get it. So I'm going to ask you a question. I've asked a couple of guys uh, and girls um, that if you had a million bucks that you had to spend on a recording project of some kind. Okay. Uh -huh. it, can, it can be video. It can be audio. It can be, you know, your dream band orchestra, you and uh, you know, Jimmy out of the grave, whatever you had a million dollars to spend. In other words, there's no budget on this thing. This is just, I am giving the opportunity to express myself in a way that I've never thought I would in my whole life. What would your project be? Don't think oh. about it. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> well, I think that. Um... All right, think about it some. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I think that I would do a. Um, I would just try to reconnect with this and and also reach out to uh, some of my favorite musicians of all time, and and have a format where we could just you know, go to a, a very cool environment and where it's beautiful to hang and play in such a way where it was extemporaneous and we we're just kind of responding to each other in real time with like no real agenda per se. 
mm-hmm. just see what happens and then compile that that stuff and they could use it i could use it if they want so on and so forth but we would just you know i'd be able to pay everybody a decent amount of money the hang would be great and i'd invite you know as i said some of my favorite musicians that i've worked with in the past and some other people that i've always wanted to work with you want to name uh, some names some names sure well there? you know i've um well I, I i think of my buddy reggie hamilton that i've played with in the past i'd love to play uh, get him involved in something jimmy herring's an old buddy and we've talked about doing some stuff over the mm-hmm. years um you know i'm a huge schofield fan and i just it just to be around that would be yeah, awesome yeah I, do you know john if you, if you... I, I met him one time and and he was nice as pie i said you know it was, it was at sweetwater and i just yeah. crept in whether he was doing a sound check and i said hey just want you to know that uh, my college experience would have been a, I forgot what I said, just a, a just a freaking hellscape if it wasn't for loud jazz and blue matter. So thank you very much. I, I've, I've interviewed him three or four times and he is just, he is everything you would expect him to be. Excellent. Yeah, he's just a great human being and just like, oh my God. Anyway, so Schofield. Uh, I, and Robin Ford's a buddy. I'd love to do something where we could just play that. I mean, we've, mm-hmm. I've done some recording with them in the past, but to do that again would be awesome. Uh, you know, Warren Haynes is someone I have never, I've met him one time and, you know, and I'm just such a huge Allman brothers fan. Um, I'd love that, but Jeff Beck would oh, yeah. be awesome. I would love to just get together with old, if, even though he a million dollars, he'd sneeze at it, but just together in a room with Jimmy page. And oh, just well, just come up with some riffs of doom and destruction, just to hang out and just we'll, to hear we'll the story. Add a few, we'll add a few more million to the budget. But just, right, <laughs> this, this is your dream. This is your dream gig, man, Jimmy. And Pitt. of course, Jeffrey Beckery, man, that yeah. would be that would just be insane. But you know, I'm also I would love to just get together with Clapton and just say, listen. Oh wow. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this SG, and I'm gonna pl- <laughs> I'm gonna plug it into this Marshall in the other room. I'm just I'm gonna dime this fucker. <laughs> And and I I just want you to to and play. I'm gonna, paint, I'm gonna paint some clowns on it and shit. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and because that that was I mean to me you know back in the day it's like you know and of course you hear people talk about this all the time but uh, you know up until like 1970 he was searching. I mean you'd hear him yeah. play and he was going for stuff. Right. And and you thought man what would have happened with that tone and that touch. Had he just decided, yeah, maybe I'll figure out how to play over a couple of different chords or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It just or not, or just maintain that thing. But at some point, he just said, "No, I'm going to be, you know, I'm be more of a singer now and write songs that, you know." So it sounds to me now, you basically, it sounds to me like you would put together a rhythm section of guys that you dug, and then you'd bring yes. in these. You'd bring in these, uh, and maybe multiple rhythm sections, maybe. Right, the, exactly. Time you're playing with, uh, you know, whoever, and the, and then bring in these um, these guitar players that you've always wanted to work with. Yes. You know, probably one at a time to do their thing. And yes. then And then with that budget, except for Jimmy Page, you send them all home with a new Miata. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> so, so there you go. <laughs> Beautiful. What more could they ask for? What what What's the question that no one's ever asked you that you go, man, I asked this to John Jorgensen. I said, John, I said, what's the question that you wish somebody would ask that no one's ever asked you? And he he was the only one that actually gave me a real answer. He said, you know what? In all the interviews I've done, no one's ever asked me about my steel playing, pedal steel playing. Ah. I said, John, tell us about your pedal steel <laughs> playing. <laughs> and he did, you know, and he did. So my question to you is, is there is there something that, um, you know, that, you'd like people to know more about in your well, playing and your existence and your philosophy and you know who you are anything it could be anything that you go man why didn't somebody ask me about my uh well I, I don't know if it's not not been asked about things per se i just find it interesting although you you've discussed you know all the things that um you know you get the the big picture but there's so many people don't get me wrong i'm i am gratified and and humbled that anyone gives a shit about me for whatever reason right (laughs) but but i find it you know it's it's just such a weird time because you know i'm sure you're the same way when you're into somebody and you and you hear somebody new like you're like well how how come i've never heard of this before 
right. then you want to find out why, right? So you right. get, you know, like you go on Wikipedia, you just go online, you start searching, you go on YouTube, you try to figure out, you know, well, what is all this kind of stuff? And I just find it so odd in this day and age uh, with the access of all the information that I'll have people who are like, man, I've really enjoyed your Wildwood videos. Um, but they'll, but they're like oblivious to the fact that I've got records, right? right. And they'll be like, oh, I've enjoyed those videos, but um, um, do you have any of your own music? I'm like, well, well, yeah, I've, that's, you know, as we've said before, that's what this has all been about from the get go. <laughs> or, or I'll have people go, uh, I've, uh, I've, they'll have no idea about the instructional material or vice right. versa. They'll, they'll have the instructional material, but have no idea. I have records or I've never seen the videos right. or the same, the other thing that, Oh, I really love your band. Have you ever thought about doing anything instructional, mm -mm, you yeah. know, and all this other kind of thing. So, and again, I'm not complaining because I mean, people's attention there, you know, there's plenty of other things to worry about other than the, right. the totality of my freaking career. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I just find it, it's, it's just always interesting to me that uh, it's like, what if I, am, am I like a marketing loser? Because I don't, <laughs> apparently. No, I'm, no you know, I'm going I'm to tell, tell you something. Sometimes it's hard for people to, um, to not pull you out of, you know, out of one bag or another bag or another bag. Sometimes if you're an artist, you're an artist. If you're an instructor, you know. Uh, sure, teacher, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And do you... I mean, and I don't have the I don't have the answer to this at all. But do you think that because you're so accessible in one aspect of your musical life, that maybe it it having an effect on how people think about you in the other avenue? Or conversely, do you think that because of all these other things, people a lot of people do know who you are and they could maybe get interested in, you know, in the music, if you will. Right. I I I, I do think that. I think that. Yeah. It's as you said, it's it's hard for people to contextualize things right. in different ways. And to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to just go out and I can kind of not, not that I'm, you know, wealthy, but I can kind of afford to go on the road now. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, and, I know what you mean. Uh, so uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're doing all right. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, I, I've got enough things that are happening that and plus my kids are all older now, so I can yeah. go on the road. But that's the main reason. It's because I just. It's like, you know, this music needs, to, I mean, this is what it's always been about. Right. I, I need to do it for myself to just go out there and just play, you know? And you know what? This is a time for it, you know? It really is. I mean, let's let's face it, you know, the, I think the, the audience is ready, you know, and the receptive, you know, to, there's enough people that are into what you're doing. If you, if you know what I'm saying, COVID's over. That's a big, obviously the huge, huge help. But I, the guitar is having a huge resurgence, I believe. I mean, I think so too. People are into the guitar again. I mean, it, it's coming around, you know, it's just coming around. People are digging it. And I think more so than ever. So here's a guy like you who's dedicated his life to it, you know, studied it, has has the raw innate talent to do all this kind of stuff. It's got all the language, all the difference. And, and people go, holy shit, man, that guy can play. I think I want to go and see what he's all about. I want to see what he's doing. I want, you know, so I think this is a great time for you, man. I really do. I said all that to say that I think this is a great time for you, Greg. Well, you know, what's been fun. Thank I appreciate that. It, but it, one of the things that's been very gratifying is, is that, is that people come out that are guitar fans, but then there'll be people that just come out and they're, the music is totally accessible. So younger people will come out and they're like, well, there's grooves and melodies and excitement and entertainment. Oh, fancy that. You know, they think it's going to be some, it's not some, you know, brooding noodle fest. You know what I mean? It's, it's pocket. It's, it, you know, it's, it's music that I think uh, is accessible across all, all, um, you know, genres and, and uh, demographics, if you will. Miles Davis said that if you look out in the audience and it's not if it's not half women, you're doing it wrong. Right. And that was at a time when it was very sexist, you know, another, you know, right. that's a whole different era. But his point was, if it's not if your music isn't appealing to people who are not musicians. Right. And, and a lot has changed since, you know, the 50s when he used to say that kind of stuff. But if you're looking out, so it's got to be accessible to people who would not necessarily be you know, into the thing. And that's, I think that's what you're getting at. You know? Right. And, and, but you know, the, the problem is, is that 
letting those people know that it's okay <laughs> you don't need to come and trust us with their ears you know yeah. that's the biggest it's the biggest thing so you know we're doing some various different things to uh, just get in front of people that wouldn't be our normal crowd but even so it's like you know it's the people that are coming out it's a nice it's a nice cross section of folk and and a lot of it is no doubt due to the fact we've been doing all these live streams during uh during covid people have been checking it out and well listen greg i can't thank you enough man i can't well, thank you, you. Where, i where appreciate is, it i'm bob baker with jazz guitar today what you're going to say if you like what you saw today please subscribe share ring the bell all that crap you know all the stuff you got to do to keep getting stuff from us it does help people if they do subscribe to our youtube and obviously the magazine that helps as well it, it's it's good for the algorithm and uh it helps us keep doing this so we appreciate that we appreciate you greg thank you so much for thank and, you bob and, i appreciate the proper it. pronunciation is cock that's perfect you see that thanks man thanks buddy bye-bye right, thank you bye-bye